How were you guys able to scale to 800 people? Did you have? Any, did you get a, a line of credit? No, we we got a free conference room the size of this. So that was our first overhead. Me and AJ didn't take any salary. AJ needed to, AJ saved money from eBay in high school and college. I had, I was in an interesting spot. I didn't own Wine Library. The part of my narrative a lot of people don't realize is in family businesses, you don't pay, like almost every employee made as much if not more than me. So I was, you know, my, my, in my 20s I was making 42, 57, 63. So the last couple of years I got up to a, a little around 100 but I lived in New York and right before Vayner started, I took all my liquid and invested in Facebook, Twitter and Tumblr. Can you reveal, reveal how much? Yeah, like two, how much did I put in? Like 220, 47, and 71. So somewhere in the ballpark of, I had, in, in my whole life I'd been able to save about 400,000 bucks because I paid like eight, $900 in rent and I worked 18 hours a day. And, when, and you put all 400 to those? All cars. of it. It's fucking crazy. It was crazy, but if you think about how big of a win, it, it's kind of like sports cards right now. So like this sports card thing is really funny. Like we I, just covered those auctions on trends, actually. I love that. Heritage auctions. Yes. Growing and like crazy. Crazy. And if, like, LeBron rookies have gone up from a thousand. Like, like it's really funny. I think a lot of people think I'm talking about sports cards right now because I, they know my narrative that I grew up with them. But I also try to remind my closest friends who are, like, calling me now and be like, yo, especially as they see the videos of, like, me and April saying, buy LeBron at a thousand, now it's 4,500. You know, buy Giannis for 180, now it's 1,500. Buy Luca for 35, now it's 280. Like, now I've got, like, the receipts and it's happened within six months. And everyone's like, wait a minute, is there something actually coming here? And I told my friends, I'm like, look, I've been passionate about sports cards since I was 11. I also haven't said a word about them for 20 years. So it's really happening. The reason I bring that up is this is one of the first things I've seen that is so unbelievably obvious to me that I did the same thing that I did with uh, investing, which is if it's 100%, not 99. If it's 99, I'm an immigrant and I'm gonna hold 50% back. But if it's 100, and you two, excuse me, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr were 100% to me, and that became, that was right. So that crushed it. We sold an $84,000 campaign to a guy that I went to a basketball game with who was a wine library customer who invited me because he was a huge collector. And literally in the second quarter of this boring Nets game in the old stadium in Jersey, he goes, so what are you up to? I was like, actually, because I felt cold, I, I hadn't told anybody. I was like, actually my brother's about to it, it, uh, graduate in two months and I'm gonna start a business with him and I'm probably gonna spend, you know, I'm gonna, you know what I said, I know what I said to him. I'm like, I'm gonna be 150%. Don't worry, I'm gonna be 100% on Wine Library because he's my big customer. But I'm gonna put a lot of effort into building this company with my brother and he's like, and turns out that he was in marketing and he had this big campaign for Gillette starting around when, before AJ graduated. Our first campaign was before AJ graduated. It was like this, bullshit influencer Twitter campaign in Vegas for Gillette's razors and they paid us $84,000 which I thought was like a trillion especially compared to what we did. I tried to get them to do like 94 smart things. They're like, no, just take some photos here. I'm like, all right. Nonetheless, that 84,000 is the funding. That's pretty crazy to me because with our business, I mean, we haven't taken a lot of funding but I still am like, how close are we, are we, do we want to run, run our margins? And then, but you have to like put money up for rent, right? So in San Francisco, well, and here, you got to put, you know, your deposit. And, well, it's and, funny, right? Like, you know, we have a lot of jobs we're putting out there at like, you know, 40 and 50, and people are like, how can you live in New York? They like yell at me. And I'm like, by not living in Manhattan, by not buying $7 Starbucks, by not taking Uber instead of the train, like, you could do anything. Like, you know, to your point, you decide, you know, you were in a little bit of a different place. You were in that world, you made a couple hundred, you made some money on that exit. You were also in the cocoon of fun, you were in San Francisco cocoon. Yeah, well now most of our people are in Austin. Exactly, like you know you from mentality of St. Louis and Nashville, and you know you as the person that was living in a cocoon of San Francisco. Like, there's, you could do anything if you're willing to not be entitled if you're willing to be practical. This is this is where Americans get caught with immigrants all the time. How can how can this happen? Very easy, like you live humbly as fuck, you save money, and you then deploy that money. It's not super complicated. You did it, I did it, my dad definitely did it. And like a billion fucking people have done it in America over the last hundred years. It's that people are impatient and insecure. Um, and so the, yeah, I mean that's how we did it. And like, so were you running we didn't pay rent for the first two and a half years of the company. 
I'm actually secretly excited about a headline in the New York Times that says VaynerMedia lays off half as its staff after the recession because if I made the wrong decisions of saving, which won't happen, but if I did, I'd still be okay with it. Here's why. I deserve it. I made the mistake. I like being accountable. I'm really into accountability. I really think it needs to get like super cool. Alex, do me a favor, text to, uh, Andy K right now and tell him I want it accountable as fuck. Hoodie made immediately, I want to wear it. See if he can get it to me this afternoon. Accountable as fuck. What, what in I, the same way, I apologize, I just want to say this. Like, in the same way that I think kindness and empathy and patience needed to be a bigger part of the formula of entrepreneurship, which is why I've talked about it a lot more, I think accountability, like, I, I just wish that every entrepreneur, back to your point, razor thin margins. What does that mean? You can get caught. If you're okay with getting caught and paying the ramifications, you win. If you're not, as you know, and I've been listening to you on this interview, people creating exits in media land, creating exits that look like it's an exit, you know it wasn't an exit, they sold their assets for a penny on the dollar, but they wanted, they didn't have the guts to say we shut down, so they sold early, right? People are not willing to be uncomfortable. I'm willing to put my own cash back into VaynerMedia if I fucked up. I'm willing to have to let go of 10% of worst employees at Vayner if nine of our clients fire us. Like shit changes, things well, happen. I, I do these exercises and I tell Adam about it all the time. I just do these exercises all the time where I'm like, if this business goes out of business tomorrow, I'll be, fi- I'm gonna be, I'll be fine. You know why? Because you will be fine. Right, and so that's what I, and I do that exercise all the time because so I remember good. when we first started, I'm Love like, that. This, oh my, my personality is so tied up in this. But then it, now it's like, if we go away tomorrow, I'll be just as happy. I would, and that kind of like when you protected your downside, that means you have no downside then, and it's only upside. And so that's kind of how we discuss it. I've said it a billion times, and I'll say it again. I want to lose everything, have everybody shit on me, say that I was a farce the whole time, see how everybody else was better than me. I was the joke. See, make fun of all the people that bought into me, all that, and then just rise back up and fucking tell everybody go fuck themselves. Like I'm into that shit. Yeah, I mean, it's really helpful because it definitely, I think it's freeing. It's it's unbelievably freeing. What's your criteria for saying no and saying yes? Complete intuition every time. And when I say yes to things outside the core of Vayner X, I always treat it as it goes to zero, but I know that I need it because I need to get my entrepreneurial nut off. So, so what's that mean then? That means that I need to absolutely make that $50,000 investment or do that thing um, to make the whole machine work. AKA, the 25% of things I'm doing that make no sense and stretch me too thin are actually the thing that gives me sanity and happiness, which allows the 75% of the Vayner focus to actually run at 150%. So Empathy Wines is one of them? Yes. And so that's your 25%? It's one of them. I mean, look, I, you know, I'm a funny guy. I talk a lot. I, I talk a lot about a lot of things, and I don't talk about some of the best things about me, like who I am as a human, in like the deep, like what Alex knows, not what you guys know. Uh, my nonprofits, I don't, and my board work there. I don't talk about that. I also don't talk about my single biggest exit. I I co-founded and co-created Resi, the restaurant app. Like literally, me and Ben Leventhal over dinner, he came up with the idea. I they were incubated at VaynerMedia. Uh, when the company was in a bad moment, I personally put money in. Uh, I spent a lot of social uh, capital getting uh, Danny Meyer and Steve Ross definitely deeply involved. I Ben and Mike Montero are absolutely the drivers of that business, but like I am easily the birth father and the third player in that story. It's a hefty nine-figure exit to Amex, and I have a funny feeling that 93% of the people that just heard this story heard it for the first time. Case was sold nine months ago. There is no confusion to why. I barely mentioned it. I just tweeted about it this week and everyone's like, oh, congrats. Uh, uh, so, I need those things to make me sane. They've also led to a ton of big wins. The Resi win covers every potential loss I have. Yeah, that's sold to Airbnb. It sold to, um, no, Airbnb was an investor though. It sold to Amex. American and it Express. was good? It was extremely good. Hefty nine figures. No shit? No shit. Wow, congratulations. So, so you know, I think that um, I have to do a better job of like communicating some of those things too. Did because you, you guys raise money for that? We did, we did. Um, first from Vayner, Vayner RSC, my fund incubated it. So, so that was, you got a double win then. I got a double win. I got a triple win because I put personal money in when it needed it. 
So, but the reality is is that um, I think when I hear you say that, I have a lot of empathy for you because I have a funny feeling we cross over in a lot of ways. I would tell you that don't overlook at it from a black and white standpoint, because to your point, I mean, there's so many things. You know, when you come from nothing, like when people email me and say, Gary, bad news, you know, really sorry, you know, but the investment you wrote into my company is going to zero, we're shutting down the doors, but don't worry, I learned a lot. I get pissed, I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker. Like, $50,000, $100,000 is a ton of money to me. Like, it doesn't matter how much I make, anything, I earned that, I bled for that, I bled for that shit. So, you know, I think that, um, but I also would say to you on the flip side, I'm sure what you're realizing is some of those checks you wrote, you're gonna, you, when you wrote it, you imagined how much you were gonna help that thing to success, and now you may never talk to that founder. Yeah. And I think that happened to me, and the way I look at it now, A, I changed my behavior a little bit. B, what, what do you mean? What I stopped investing as much, and would invest where I thought by accident I could help. Just by maybe, you know, when you build a brand too, your name can help. I have absolutely invested when I believed in something and believed in the person and knew that my investment would help them raise more money. So I've thought a lot about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it, I think all those micro losses is why I'm gonna macro win. I need it. I'm an artist. I'm creative by nature. I need it. A stunning amount of people overextend themselves on their first house purchase just to say they bought a home. Everybody almost maximizes their down payment, which eliminates cash flow. Uh, almost everybody buys a home that's too big for them and has an extra bedroom or living room that they never use. And I think for people that are entrepreneurial and are trying to grow happiness and business capabilities, that they need to rethink their buying home strategy and lean into more renting so that they have the liquid to go on the offense so they can then buy a home at 39 or 57 or never. So I believe in that. And then so the industry took that as you know, Gary says never buy a home, and I love that. My sister's a real estate agent. I thought, it, I still, I believe in a triple, and when I tell you I give no fucks to the backlash of people that have financial vested interest in people buying homes for themselves, not having empathy for the person that buys the home, then go fuck themselves.